Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So I'm here with the fourth and final week of my 28 days of perfume challenge. And what I'm doing with this challenge is wearing a different perfume every day for four weeks. And I've been doing weekly updates where I talk about my thoughts on all the perfumes that I wore for the week. So I'll get started with the fourth week. So the first perfume that I wore this week was the Nest Midnight Fleur Fragrance. Now this one has notes of exotic woods, black amber, patchouli, night blooming jasmine, and vanilla orchid. And the style of this one is sensual, intoxicating, and bold. So this one is very interesting. I was like kind of drawn to it because it has that jasmine scent that sounded amazing. But it also has patchouli, which if you've watched my previous videos, you know that's a scent or a note that I don't really care for. So with this one, it turned out that I didn't really care for it. I think the patchouliness of it just made me not like it. Um, I would be interested if to try this one without patchouli to see if I would like it better. Um, but as it stands, this was one I didn't really care for. So it kind of shows me that like any scent with patchouli, it just sort of makes me not like it. So I really think I don't like patchouli. So that was for the first day of the week. The second scent that I wore this week was from Wild Fox. Now this is, the scent is called Wild Fox as well. It was like their signature scent. The notes, the notes of this are absinthe mist, apricot blush, incense, jasmine essence, dewy honeysuckle, white camilla, captive musk, honey, and ambro. Um, the style of this is dreamy, lush, and romantic. So this one I actually really liked. Um, it was very, I would say like a sensual sort of floral scent. I definitely think it would be more for like the evening time. Um, but yeah, this one really interests me. It's definitely like an interesting blend. I think that incense note makes it a little, I would say like heavier. So definitely I would say it's more like evening scent, like I said before, but this one was um, an interesting mix. Um, so I did enjoy this one. Next I wore a scent by Kate Spade. This is the Walk On Air scent. Now there's a lot of notes of this one. So the notes are Linden Blossom, Maiden's Hair Fern, Calbrisian um, Bergamot, Solomon Seal, Tunisian Neroli, Lily of the Valley, Magnolia, Magnolia Grandiflora, Egyptian Jasmine, Narcissus Absolute or Purr, Crimin Lily, White Iris, Violet Leaf, and Violet Leaf Absolute or purr. So a ton of different notes. Um, the style of this one is fresh, modern, and floral. And I would say with this one that just had like too many different floral scents. So you couldn't really pick out the individual scents. Like it has bergamot and jasmine, which I really like, but I just think there's just too much going on with this one. I feel some floral scents are like that. They kind of smell like if you were going into a store that sells perfume or department store or something where they have all the perfumes like in the air and it's just like that overwhelming cloud of fragrance that you can't really pick out anything individual or like a flower shop that just has all the florals going on at once. I feel like for me, I like florals that are a little just cleaner, less notes versus like every single flower you could think of in one fragrance. So I kind of felt like that with this one. It was just too much of a set and I, I like being able to pick out individual notes and this one I definitely couldn't. So I think for me, this one wasn't my favorite. Um, it wasn't horrible or anything. I totally would wear the rest of this little vial, but it's just nothing that I would ever get in like the full size or anything. So that's my thoughts on that one. Um, next I wore a scent by Marc Jacobs. This is like the original, I don't know if it's the original Marc Jacobs scent, but it's a classic Marc Jacobs scent. It's just the original Daisy scent. So the notes of this one are strawberry, violet leaves, jasmine, and white woods. So this is a scent that I've tried a lot of samples of, and it's one that I do like. But I feel like I've just sort of like tried so many samples of it and I'm just kind of over it. Um, 
like yeah it's nothing I ever get in like the full size I have had the Marc Jacobs Daisy Oh So Fresh which I like better than this one but this one I just am sort of like whatever about at this point like it's just not exciting to me um I can appreciate that it's not a ton of different notes like the Marc Jacobs or like the um, Kate Spade one but yeah it just wasn't my absolute favorite so I'm kind of over this one at this point but um, I did try that one out. Then I tried another scent from Marc Jacobs. This is the Mod Noir. Now this is a newer scent. I think it's been out for a few years now. Um, but the notes of this one are greens, gardenia, and creamy musk. And the style of it is bold, mo modern, and unique. Now this one I did really like. I love that it just basically had that gardenia note. That's like the predominant scent of this one. And I can really appreciate that it's just a kind of a simple floral scent. There's not a ton of layering going on with it. It's just a straight up kind of gardenia scent. And I actually really did like this. So again, it just sort of shows me that I like sort of cleaner floral scent. So I did really like that one. Then I tried out the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue scent. So this is a scent that's very similar to a scent that I used to wear in like college and like my early 20s. Um, that was the Machino Cheap and Chic um, I Love Love scent. Like I went through a few bottles of that. It has like a um, blue frosted bottle with like an orange top. Um, but yeah, that was totally my scent back in the day and this I, um, light blue scent by Dolce & Gabbana is very similar. Um, but I love that scent for so long, but like one day I just kind of like got turned off from it. It was kind of weird. It was like, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> um, so this really reminds me of that. So it's nice to kind of revisit like scents that I liked in the past, but at this point, I don't think it's something I would ever get in the full size. At least at this point, I would not get it in the full size. Like I've kind of moved past the scent and I like other things now, but it was kind of fun. Um, to you know remember that set so the notes of this particular one are sicilian citron bluebell granny smith apple jasmine sandback bamboo white rose cedarwood amber and musk so it does have a lot of notes that i do still like um but you know it's just sort of like i i think of this as like something i would have worn maybe like 10 years ago or something like that um, the style of this one is deep and true. So there's that one. And then the last one that I wore this week was at, by Atelier Cologne. And I've had some hits and misses with this particular brand throughout the challenge. Um, this is the Bergamot Soleil. I did actually really like this one. So the notes of this one are Bergamot, um, Bigarte, which actually, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I looked up what it is and it's an bitter orange scent or like the Seville orange. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, Amberette has jasmine, lavender, cardamom, vetiver, oak moss, and white amber. And the style of this one is sunny, effervescent, and floral. I definitely agree with that. It's a very bright sort of citrus scent. So I did really like this one. I love um, I found th throughout the challenge I really love bergamot as a note, so this one I did really like. So I'm happy with Atelier Clone to end on a high note versus um, the Vanille and Sensei that I tried for them a few weeks ago that I just hated. So I was happy to end on a better note um, with this particular brand. So that's everything I tried out through the week. Um, and as always, I'm going to now rank the perfumes from my least favorite to my favorite. That's something I've been doing every week. It's kind of um, been fun to see like what what is at the bottom um, to the top. So the bottom for this week, I definitely would have to go with the Nest Midnight Fleur Fragrance with that patchouli note. Just not something that I really cared for. Um, the sixth spot, I think I would go with the Kate Spade Walk on Air. Again, it's a very just layered floral scent that has just a ton of different notes, which I just don't really care for that. I like my florals a little bit cleaner, so I'd have to put this at the number six spot. Um, the number five spot, I think I would go with the Marc Jacobs Daisy. It's just a scent that I've tried a lot in the past, and I'm just kind of over at this point, so I put that at number five. Um, number four, I think I'd go with Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Again, this is a scent that I liked, you know, like 10 years ago or so, but 
at this point I've just found other stuff that I like more I've kind of moved past this set so put that at the number four spot um number three I think I go with the wild fox scent now this one is one I liked it's one I probably want to try again but it does sort of intrigue me um uh, but I did I did like this one so I put that one at number three for number two, I think I'd go with the Marc Jacobs Mod Noir, the Gardenia set. This one is really nice. I liked, appreciated that it just had like the one floral no. It wasn't like too much going on. So I did really enjoy this one. So I put that at number two. And then my top pick for the week would be the Atelier, Atelier Cologne Bergamot Soleil set. I did really like that citrus no. Um, and I love bergamot, so I really enjoyed this one. So that's my ranking for everything for the week. Um, I did really enjoy this last week of the challenge. I think I got to try out some things that I haven't tried before and then some things I have tried before. So it's kind of fun comparing them to each other. So now that I've finished off the challenge, kind of went through all the perfumes that I wore, I did want to kind of um, sort of go over what I've kind of learned overall from this challenge, kind of what were my standouts from the challenge, what are some things that I didn't like from the challenge, kind of just do a wrap up for everything. So to start off with, um, what I've learned is there are certain notes that I really like in fragrance and some that I don't like so much. So a note that I found that was common that I didn't like in scents was patchouli. I think every week I tried out a perfume with patchouli and I always ranked it towards the bottom, either my sixth or seventh pick of the week. Um, so the ones that had patchouli were the Nest Midnight Flora, which I didn't really like, um, Gucci Guilty, um, the Lancome set I didn't really like, and the YSL Black Opium. So that kind of just shows me that if a perfume has patchouli in it, so be sort of wary towards it because of this sort of test sample, I haven't liked anything with patchouli in it. So that's a note that I definitely have learned that I want to sort of avoid. Um, and then there were two particular scents that I actually liked the least. They weren't the ones with patchouli. I have two other scents that were my least favorite throughout the whole challenge. Um, my least favorite overall, I don't think it would be a surprise, um, but it was the Atelier Clone Vanilla Incense. This one was just a very musky vanilla scent. I can't even describe how much I hated it. It like put me in a bad mood the day that I wore it. Um, so yeah, I did not enjoy this one at all. So that was my least favorite that I tried. And my second least favorite was the Etat Libre de Orange scent, the Remarkable People scent. Now this one I think is branded to be sort of unisex. Um, I would say that's definitely true. I would even say it leans a little more masculine. So I just didn't care for this one. And the notes of this one made it seem like it was going to be like an amazing scent. I think it had notes of like champagne and grapefruit. Um, it had jasmine. So like all notes that I like and I thought like, oh, that's going to be an amazing scent. But I tried it out. It's just very um, like a men's clone almost. So I just didn't really care for this one. So I definitely would put that one at the bottom. So those are the scents, particular scents, and the kind of note, the patchouli note that I've learned that I just don't really love. But I did find some things through this challenge that I did really enjoy. Um, so in particular with notes, the ones that I found that I really liked or were common threads in perfumes that I like. There are two different notes that I found that I really like. The first one being bergamot. So like the Atelier Clone Bergamot Soleil one of this week, I really enjoy. I really enjoy that sort of citrus note. Um, and I think it was it was just a common thread. There's quite a few ones that I tried that had the bergamot note and I tended to like that. Another note that I found that I really liked was jasmine, and um, in particular, a perfume that I found that I really like that I don't already own um, that I would be interested in adding to my collection was the um, Erin iCat jasmine scent. This one had a like pretty heavy jasmine scent, um, so I really like this one. That was one of the stuff I don't already own that I would want, definitely want to you know, try out again and maybe consider adding to my collection. So I really liked that one in particular. And then another scent that I really love that I haven't um, like owned in the full size 
that I kind of would want to maybe add to my collection was the Atelier Cologne Cedar Atlas set. And this one was really interesting because it had both the bergamot note and a jasmine note. So it's kind of mixing the two notes that I found that I really liked into one fragrance. And I tend, I've kind of seen that I like that kind of combination. Um, this one also has that cedar wood note, so it's more like a um, kind of woody citrus note, which I found that was just very intriguing. So um, that one I did really like as well. Um, and kind of going with that um, bergamot um, jasmine combination, another scent, I actually do own this in like a rollerball, but the, um, the Erin Water Lily Sunset had a bergamot note, a jasmine note, and also the water lily note. I know I found that that combination was just really nice. And I think this perfume kind of sums up perfectly, like the like perf my perfect sort of perfume. So I really did enjoy this one. Um, and there's a few more that I tried or I had in this challenge that I already owned the full size of. And I did enjoy using all of those, which was kind of good that... The ones that kind of stood out to me were ones I already owned and then um, just a few more that I might want to add to my collection. So the ones that I tried that I already owned were the Elizabeth and James, the Nirvana White and Black. So it was good that I still like this sense. It wasn't like, oh, I own these, but I like so many other ones better. Like, I'm glad that I, these ones are the ones that like were on the top for me. Um, and then the other one that I... Um, tried or had in this challenge that I already own is the Alien by Terry Moogler. So again, it was a sort of jasmine scent. So um, happy with that. So those are the ones that really, really the standouts. I would say that in terms of adding stuff to my collection, it would um, be the um, Aaron Icat jasmine set and the Cedar Atlas by Atelier Cologne. Those were really the kind of standout the new discoveries from doing this um, sort of challenge. Um, some other notes of what I've learned. Um, as I said with this week with the Kate Spade Walk in Air, I really don't like when a scent has too many different floral notes going on. I just like sort of cleaner floral notes. I like to be able to pick out the notes. So Kate Spade Walk in Air was definitely just an too many different things going on um, in terms of the florals. So that one was one I wasn't super big fan of. Um, other ones in that category, I would definitely say the Scotta Joyful just had a lot going on. Didn't particularly care for this one. I mean, they these are fine. I totally would wear them or use up the little samples of them, but they're just not anything that I would ever want to get in the full size, I guess is what I'm saying with these ones. And then another one in that sort of category, I'd put the um, Marc Jacobs Daisy Dream set. Just a lot of different florals going on with those. So that's something I've learned. I just want to keep it to cleaner floral scents. Um, there was also some scents that I tried throughout the challenge that sort of reminded me of stuff that I've used in the past. Um, so from this week, I had mentioned that with the Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, it really reminded me of a scent that I wore in college or like my early 20s, so very nostalgic, but nothing I'd ever want to buy in the full size at this point because, you know, I've kind of been there, done that with this type of scent. So that was a scent I put in that category. The um, Daisy by Marc Jacobs is also a scent um, that sort of reminds me of something I've had in the past. Um, it reminds me of the Oh So Fresh by Marc Jacobs, which I've used up previously. So again, it's nothing I would want to purchase in the full size at this point. I've kind of found other things that I've liked better. And then finally, the Versace Absolute Bright Crystal is a scent that I've had the Bright Crystal in a full size before. So this isn't anything that I want to, you know, purchase at this point. Like it's one that I've worn previously or something very similar and I wouldn't need to buy it at this point or repurchase it at this point. That's kind of a thing with perfume. I feel like once you go through a whole bottle, unless you absolutely love it, you kind of want to move on to something else, discover something else versus just like repurchasing. I don't know. I don't, that's my kind of thought on it. I haven't always done that, but at this point I kind of like the process of like discovering new scents versus just repurchasing and repurchasing. But anyway, that's just my kind of opinion on it. Um, some other ones that I tried, I just want to quickly mention my thoughts in summary. So I tried a lot of the clean scents. Um, I think for the first three weeks of the challenge, I tried one of these a week. So I tried the clean air scent, clean rain, and the first blush scent. So with clean air, I think I had said it didn't smell like anything, so that was very disappointing. The other two scents, clean, um, 
Rain and First Blush. I did like those, but they're nothing that really stand out in my mind. Like they were fine to wear, but they're not like, oh, I really need to try them out some more. Or I really would like to get that in a full size. They were just kind of okay to me. So um, I'm not particularly like blown away by this brand. So it's nothing I'd really want to explore some more. So that was kind of the clean scents. Um, I do have some scents that I would like to try again. They kind of intrigued me, but they're ones that I definitely, like some scents I tried that I really liked, I tried like once and I was like, oh, I really want to try that again or not try it again, but I really want to like add it to my collection. Like I kind of loved them for the first time I used them, but there's some scents I feel like, you know, I just would need to kind of try again to like have a full opinion on them. So that would include the Marc Jacobs Mod Noir, which I did really like the Gardenia set, but I would definitely want to try that one again. Um, and then also from this week, the Wild Fox Wild Fox scent, that like sensual floral scent. This one was definitely interesting to me as well. I would definitely put that in the try again category. Um, also in this category, I put the Terry Mugler Angel scent. Um, this one... I think I'd said when I first sprayed it on, I didn't like it. I was like, this is disgusting. But throughout the day, it really grew on me. So I'd be interested to try this one again to see if I had the same sort of thoughts on this. So I'd put that in the try again category. And then finally in this category, interestingly, I'd put the Bulgari Omnia Crystalline. This is the first scent that I used in this challenge. And I'd really want to see if I used it again, if I think hi more highly of it. This is a pretty like clean fragrance. It had not a lot of notes. So I might appreciate this one more now that I've tried out everything. I might um, like it better at this point. So I do want to try this one again as well. Um, so I think I talked about everything and I have like two scents. I'll just quickly mention that I didn't have in any other sort of categories. Um, so the kind of leftover scents were the Prada Candy scent, which is a very powdery sweet scent. This one I liked. I have tried a lot of samples of this one as well. Um, I think for this one I would never get it in full size, but it is kind of fun to try out occasionally if I get like free samples or whatever. So there's that one. And finally I have the Fossil 1954 scent. Um, now this one I remember liking better when I first got the little um, vial. I think when I first got the sample I had like two samples of it so I remember liking this one better but when I tried it in this challenge I was just sort of like okay about it so that shows me either like my like preferences have changed or kind of comparing this to other things I didn't like it as much so um, this one I'm just sort of like eh about so anyway <laughs> I know that was like a lot to like recap but I think overall I had a lot of fun with this challenge. It was just fun kind of comparing perfumes to each other, kind of finding stuff that I really liked, and then finding stuff that I kind of want to avoid. It's kind of fun just to discover like my preferences with perfume, and I feel like this was a great way to do it. So I definitely recommend doing this um, to anyone that would be interested. Just kind of take your perfume samples, try out different things every day, kind of feel see your thoughts on them. Because I feel like that's the only way you're going to really kind of find the notes that you like, the particular perfumes that you like, is just to like sample things and try things out because, you know, otherwise you can't necessarily do it just by reading the notes. You're not really going to know how it interacts with your skin chemistry or how the notes interact together unless you actually wear it. So I had a lot of fun with this. I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos and yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.